this set as the Bearcats of Cincinnati and the Redbirds of Illinois State hook up, and we welcome you to Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena on the campus of Illinois State University. I'm Greg Hallblight, joined by my sidekick on tonight's telecast, Tom Preisman. Illinois State's got to recover in a hurry. They had a five-set marathon. The fifth game went to 17-15. So the Redbirds have to recover in a quick hurry, Tom Preisman. Yeah, Steph Jankowitz was the leader for the Redbirds in that game, over 60 assists. She got Jalen Keene involved. She got everyone else involved. She kept them in the match. Now it's tough. That's a tough loss to swallow. Now you have to turn around and you play a good Cincinnati team on the other side, Greg. You mentioned Jalen Keene, the leader in kills for Illinois State. No surprise. She's had that role for a while now. The leader in kills for Cincinnati, Carly Nolan, an Illinois high school product out of a really good program at Crystal Lake South. She's going to have to be one of the keys for the Redbird defense. It's the final match of the Redbird Classic. It's the Bearcats and the Redbirds. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. Starting lineups presented by Illinois Ford. We take a look at the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And they come in with just one win on this campaign. It was Crosstown rival Xavier that they beat in five sets. And you'll see that's quarterback by Jay Tinglehoff. She is the setter. Maya Muldrow, Maya Eller. And then Carly Nolan. She's the one we alluded to just a bit ago. The kill leader on this squad in the middle, Jasmine Jones. And then Christiante Stamatu is in the outside, and Erica Kostalak also on the outside as well. Those are the Bearcats. The Redbirds of Illinois State coming off a tough five-set loss just a couple of hours ago. You'll see the middle there, Jalen Keene, and her opposite is Allie Line. A good middle attack. Jalen Keene, a three-time first-teamer in the Missouri Valley Conference. Lexi Wallen on the outside. Kendall Meyer, a back row player. Lexi Varga on the right. And Courtney Pence, the libero of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Two-time defensive player of the week in the Valley. Quarterback by freshman Steph Jankowitz. And she had a very nice five-set match. Tom mentioned that 60 assists for her. But the Redbirds at 3-5 and five come into today's contest still with a shot to win their own Redbird Classic. Uh, Cincinnati head coach, at least today, is their associate head coach. He is Philip White. Molly Alvey, sixth season head coach of the Bearcats, not with the team this weekend. She is about to give birth any moment now. Coach, we wish you the best. I suspect maybe you're watching in. We wish you all the best. Molly Alvey and her husband, Philip White, is taking over as the associate head coach. Kevin Carroll, Jake Neheisel are the assistants under Coach Alvey and today for Coach White. And Leah Johnson in her first season as the head coach at Illinois State University. She comes by way of Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville where she was the Ohio Valley Conference Coach of the Year just this past season. And her assistants include the associate head coach Eric Plunkett and assistant coach Peter Netasinga and the director of volleyball operations Emily Siefkin. A lot of red going on here at Redbird Arena. By the way, officials for today, our first referee on the stand is Augie Werner, second referee Tim Neals, and the line judges are John Gillespie and Dennis Inman. Really important, Greg, to see how the Redbirds respond after that five-set match earlier on in the day. We talk a lot about these Saturdays, how you bounce back in general. Even more difficult when you go 17-15 of the fifth set, not only just physically, but emotionally as well for Illinois State to bounce back. It was a two-hour and 20-minute match. By the way, those lineups are brought to you by Ford, inviting you to visit your local Ford store or by FordNow.com. It's been a busy weekend, and it is down to the last match. It's an interesting scenario, as you see head coach Leah Johnson chatting with Jalen Keene. Offense runs largely through her, but not entirely through her. The Redbirds can either win their four-team Redbird Classic or they can finish fourth in last. It just depends. A sweep, though, if the Redbirds win in three sets, would give them the title of their own tournament. A loss would actually put them in fourth. It's so, in other words, it's a very good early season tournament. We are ready to go. It is the two-time defensive player of the week for the Missouri Valley Conference. Springfield, Illinois' Courtney Pence, who puts the ball in play, and the first attack goes wide. The middle attack for the Bearcats, and it puts Illinois State on the board first. That swing from Carly Nolan. Courtney Pence at the stripe, a Springfield senator. Her football team's playing, as a matter of fact, uh, right now. 
Tom Prizman. They're 2-0. and oh. She's got to be excited about that. Nice roof put up by Jalen Keene. How about Penn? She was an outside hitter in high school, actually eighth all-time in the history of Illinois high school volleyball and kills, comes to Illinois State and becomes this terrific libero defensive player all-around master for Illinois State. And look at what she's been able to do, changing from her natural position in high school. It's a fantastic story. She's a converted back row player, but, man, has she owned it. She's about the best, not only that Illinois State has seen, and we've seen some great ones, but also one of the best ever, really, in the Missouri Valley Conference. And her career is really only just barely half over as she is a junior in Illinois State once again on the board with a quick 3 nothing advantage. It's the Redbirds going to work here with Pence. A little pop fly serve that barely reaches the spiking line. They'll try Nolan from the right pin. Almost worked, but Pence says not so fast. She delivers the free ball. Have to save the pass with a nice set. One-handed is Tinglehoff, but the attack went wide. The Bearcats are out of system, and the Redbirds are the beneficiaries. She's back row. She couldn't just tap it over. So as a result, Tinglehoff had to at least get something of a set, but it wasn't what she desired on the bad pass. Left side swing from Erica Kostelak, but the birds are all over it. From the left side, Lexi Wallen delivers it off the digger and out the back door, and the Redbirds surging out to a handful to nothing here in the first set. We wondered about the start for Illinois State. Well, don't worry about it at all. The Redbirds showing in full form. No signs of rust at all, no signs of lack of energy at all as well. Nolan left pin, roof, raise. Jalen Keene, a block assist will also go to Lexi Varga. And Phillip White says, we've got to put a stop to four of them on four attack errors for Cincinnati without a kill in seven swings. The Redbirds got the other two points with their own kills. Yeah, Illinois State hitting 1,000. Cincinnati hitting negative 571, excuse me. That's not a good trend to begin the match. And certainly for a Cincinnati team looking to avoid a winless tournament here, really not the start you wanted, especially against the Redbirds on their home floor. Should mention the Valley on ESPN3 is brought to you by Ford, inviting you to visit your local Ford store by FordNow.com. Pence will turn into a setter, racing up Wallen from beyond the 10-foot line, but the Bearcats find it. And they put one on the floor, their first kill of this match. And it's Carly Nolan who registers it, and she'll go back to the line to serve for the first time for Cincinnati. That was crucial right there. Could not afford to let that deficit grow any further, stop the tide, use the timeout effectively, and now get back in this match. Jump server. Keen tools. There's that effective middle attack for Jalen Keen, who led the way for the Redbirds in kills in both of the matches that they played here in the tournament. On all Missouri Valley Conference first team selection for the third straight year, if she gets first team honors this season, she would be only the sixth player in Missouri Valley Conference history to do that. And now Cincinnati finding their feet just a little bit as the Bearcats score and cut this to a five-point deficit. And you mentioned Jalen Keene. How about the fact that the Keene family has produced Dalton and Jalen Keene, arguably the two best players in their respective sports. Dalton, of course, on the football team for Illinois State. Pretty incredible. You saw Jasmine Jones collect the kill. It's a swing play, a little step out for Jalen Keene. She can hit off the right pin, get a little side out for Illinois State. And they're right back at the serving line with Lexi Wallen. You have to watch Keen going up the middle so much. The defense slides that way. Instead, the ball played over the head. Keen goes to the outside and goes cross court. Easy pickings for Jalen Kane if she gets that open of a look. Into the lineup, Juma Armando. She is a senior transferring from Chicago State University where she was their MVP last season, but a middle attack tool from Maya Muldrow to get it right back for Cincinnati. She had a very nice match this afternoon. Armando was incredible in the third and fourth sets. Really, when Illinois State looked a little bit tired, she came in, had 14 kills in those middle sets, and was a big reason why that match went to five. Emily Azara serving for Cincinnati. Armando took a little something off, but it was kept alive by Maya Eller, the Bearcats' libero. Pence is there for Illinois State. Armando swings, finds a corner, I thought. Apparently just a little bit long. The flag went up right away from the line judge in the corner. We don't have the best angle with the naked eye, and we'll go with his judgment. Azaro deals to Pence. Keen has to tip, but she just found a little bitty eye of the needle. The blockers were off the net, and Jalen took advantage. 
And now she goes to the service line where she's so dangerous. One of the best servers on this team in addition to being one of the best front row players. See Jalen just shoved that inside the block. Somehow kept alive on a rolling dig by Lexi Varga. Bearcats will try to convert this. Just a tip. Jankowicz starts, so that turns the Redbirds into a little ad lib, but they send it back to the Bearcats. A left side pin for Stamatu, and she's able to send it out the back door off of Jalen Keene. Chrysanthi Stamatu out of Greece, just a freshman. And she serves. Allie Line with the line shot in more ways than one from the right pin. Right back for Illinois State. They are siding out very well, thank you. Line did not see that much playing time in the earlier match today, looking for a bounce back performance. That's a good way to start it. She struggled in the first set of the earlier match. Jankowitz places it on the back stripe. Bearcats were hoping against hope it would go long. Line judge says, hate to disappoint you. Actually, he didn't hate to disappoint them. It's his job, but nonetheless, an untouched ace for Jankowicz. Now she goes short with it, mixing them up, and a net violation called against Illinois State. Allie lined the guilty party, so the net violation and what is a blocking error will go toward the Bearcats, cutting this to a six-point deficit and Illinois State lead. Bearcats, a highly touted squad, but they have uh, struggled here in the early goings, this ninth match of the season. Backpedaling off the net, trying to tip something over. It actually kind of rolled on the fingertips. I believe that was Zara who couldn't get it converted in Illinois State. Will side out once more as Kendall Meyer checks in to serve. And Greg, you talked about how the Bearcats were a highly touted team, made the NCAA tournament last season. It's hard to mention this 27 Bearcat team without mentioning Jordan Thompson, who's not with the club due to injury, and that's a huge loss. She's been a terrific player entering now what would have been her junior season. She would have been the tallest player on the floor by far at six feet four inches tall, but she's not done with her college career. And another block for Illinois State. This time it looked like uh, Lexi Wall and an Allie Line, I believe, were the ones to combine for that as we take a look at it again. Allie Line primarily got the Redbird wing on it. Our cameraman has to back up just to make room for Kendall Meyer. And the Bearcats can't pass it. And Illinois State goes back to work. I just saw finally for the first time in the corner. And I don't know. <laughs> I guess apparently the Redbird Reserves start flapping their wings on any point like that. Anytime there's a service ace, we'll see them flapping their wings. And on a Meyer serve, you'll see an unusual bow and arrow as well. They have a couple routines the Redbird Reserves do. <laughs> you don't see that very often, but I give them some credit and obviously coach Johnson doesn't mind to stay in the match mentally and I guess that's one way to do it but the bad serve gives it right back to Cincinnati and at the stripe is Jade Tinglehoff and she sends it long the Bearcats committing error upon error and a lot of that on the reserves is led by Lovejoy a senior and it's a good way for if as a senior leader maybe you're not seeing as much playing time stay involved in the match get your teammates involved as well and have some fun on the sidelines and Obviously paying dividends for the Redbirds. It's Wallen, Keen, and Varga, your front row for Illinois State. Pretty potent there. A block just got a tiny piece of it to let Kendall Meyer go to work, and it's set over quickly, and Illinois State converts. Once again, let's see Wallen going to work. As we see it again. Jalen Keen that time just used her height almost like a basketball player bringing it down and just slamming it to the floor. No opportunity there for Cincinnati. Great wingspan. I'd said Wall, and it, she was up there, but it was Keen with the hard swing. Pence with a diving dig. Keen tips. Left side attack, Bearcats. Kostelak denied, but back at him. And now Keen with a little net play finishes the point. And Illinois State, a 10-point advantage here in the first set. This is how Leah Johnson would have liked to have scripted this match. You could not have asked for a better start of 6 nothing beginning. Jalen Keene getting hot early, and it's looking all Redbirds in this first set. Their first match of the day, a two-hour and 20-minute affair, ended only less than four hours ago. Took the cross by Nolan, and she found the perfect placement despite the rolling, diving efforts of Kendall Meyer 
Bearcats on the board. And you mentioned a two hour and 20 minute match. On the other side, Cincinnati only played four sets at 10.30 this morning. So they're definitely the fresher of the two teams. But right now that's not making a difference. Maybe they got some of those dollar Redbird Arena hot dogs from earlier for their between match lunch. This attack is a little bit long. No touch detected. So the Bearcats will have a rally now. They have not scored consecutive points just yet until this moment. And it's Nolan with the hard jump serve. Meyer with a good pass. There's Wallen blocked back at her. The stuff mostly recorded by Kostelak. Jasmine Jones will get a block assist. So three straight now rung up by the Bearcats. Nolan deals wide. Got some side spin on it. She comes from a very good high school program, by the way, Crystal Lake South. They, I have to go back and look for sure to see if they actually played here on Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena because this is the site of, of course, the state high school tournament. Has been since 1990, believe it or not, Tom Prizman. I was here for the very first one. The very first champion crowned on the tournament. I actually called that match. Princeton High School won Class A. You know, Three-set victory over Huntley. And a lot of future Redbirds and other players have played on that floor, yes, first as high school stars in the state championships. Wallen down the line, it found the stripe. She found a little bitty seam between the antenna and the outside of the block. Nicely done by Lexi, who will now serve for Illinois State. You talk about another Illinois product, Lexi Wallen. Not only a great volleyball player, but how about this? Scored over 2,000 points as a basketball player. Was three-time All-State on the hardwood. The pass from Stamatu. Down line effort by Nolan is kept alive by Varga. Nice one arm up by the libero Eller. Stamatu tips. Varga covers it up at the 10-foot line. Tipped by Keen Eller's there for the Bearcats. A slap by Stamatu. Pence keeps it alive. Outside, here's Amando. That's kept alive by the Bearcats. We're still playing. Stuffed at the net, but the Bearcats keep it alive. The swing, and now the roof is raised to end a long point. Armando and Keen slam the door. Nicely done. Mostly Juma on that from the outside, but there's a reason why you get a block assist if you're participating in the block because there were no other options. And I talked to head coach Leah Johnson after the first match, and I brought up Juma Armando, and she said she has so much skill already, and we're teaching her so many new things in terms of not just smashing the ball but adding parts to her game. But what they've seen, they love from the Chicago State transfer. You mentioned the team MVP. She finished her season really strong at Chicago State and now carrying that on, and looks like she can be a big part of the depth for Illinois State where it's not just the starting lineup, it's the people behind them that can really make a difference right now. And we're seeing that in the first set play out. Quite a bit of depth in this Redbird squad. This is the 25th year, or 25th anniversary, I should say, of Missouri Valley Conference women's athletics. And the very first Missouri Valley Conference volleyball tournament played right here on this campus. Interestingly enough, it was not played in this building. It was played next door at Horton Fieldhouse. Previous commitment here at Redbird Arena. Not too many events held at Horton Fieldhouse anymore, just about the intramurals. No. That's about it now. But it was a fantastic five-set match. The very first Missouri Valley Conference volleyball champion, Illinois State. That was in the day when uh, the top seed, the regular season champion, automatically hosted the tournament. Now for many years, going on two decades, we have had a neutral site previously bid, which, interestingly enough, in the 25th season, or the 25th anniversary is going to be right here on Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena Thanksgiving week, starting Thanksgiving Day. Jalen Keene with the swing. The swing on the step out from the right pin, getting it back for Illinois State. Still now a 10-point advantage for the Redbirds as Lexi Wallen serves. That was a fantastic match, and I always have to chide my, my Valley partner, Linda Dollar. She was the head coach of, at the time, Southwest Missouri State who lost that five-set match to Julie Morgan's Redbirds in 1992, right next door. What a match, though. Julie Pasca, the academic advisor for the Redbird Volleyball Program, my partner on the telecast. Floating service by Azara. Keen once again from the right pin. It's working. They can't block it. 
Keen's hard enough to block from the middle attack, but when she's on the, the slide play, it makes it even rougher to get a, a roof raised. Lucky number seven. That's her seventh kill of this first set. An incredible start for Jalen Keene. She's hitting above 500. Shot way out for Stamatu, but she misses it. Oh, no, she didn't. She was hit on the back stripe. Called good. I thought for an instant I misread the signal by the official. My bad. It is the kill for Stamatu. Goes back to serve. And there you see head first-year head coach Leah Johnson taking over this Redbird program. Bad pass. Jankowitz digs it out. Sent free. Bearcats given an opportunity. The tip by Muldrow, but the Redbirds are there. Hard little hook swing from Alley Line in the middle, and the Redbirds get it back. They're two points away from the first set. And, Greg, I think it's fair to say the Redbirds have pretty much been in cruise control this entire first set. 6 nothing lead, only built upon it since then, and really have not been threatened by the Cincinnati team who looks to regroup when the second set begins. Jankowicz, a tough service that Eller could not bring up. And that, with the ace, gets the Redbird bench a flapping, and it is set point. Jankowicz to serve for the set. Goes a little deeper to Eller this time, who makes the pass, but to the back row. The bump set from Tinglehoff, tooled off the Redbird block. And so the Bearcats still have a pulse in this first set. This is a good Cincinnati team. They made the tournament as an at-large bid a year ago. They're not going to go down easily without a fight. Lost a lot of personnel from it, but line is blocked, but back to the Redbirds. The dump by Jankowicz, successful in that a few times this afternoon, but the Bearcats read it. Redbirds back on offense, though Varga, a little pop tip over the block from the right pin. On the back row, Stamatu for the Bearcats. Jankowicz is there, so pencil bump a set, and it's Varga to end the first set. Illinois State with an 11-point win in Chapter 1 in the Redbird Classic finale. Good decision just off the blocker's hands. Illinois State, a decisive victory in our first set in this best-of-five Redbird Classic finale here on Doug Collins' court at Redbird Arena. Welcome back to Doug Collins' court at Red Bird Arena on the campus of Illinois State University. The Valley on ESPN3 is brought to you by Country Financial. Take simple steps at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. Greg Hallblad with Tom Prizman courtside here at Illinois State University. Beautiful day outside, and it's looking pretty nice inside as well if you're a scoreboard watcher and a fan of Illinois State. Cincinnati just had a hard time in the first set. Nine kills, hit under 100. Illinois State only three errors on 30 swings to hit 367 on 14 kills, seven of which came from Jalen Keene. And as we said at the outset, a lot of the offense runs through her, and a lot of the offense, at least half of it did in the first set. 
Cincinnati right now looks like a team without their best player. It seems like you plan so much around Jordan Thompson because she's such a dynamic player. You mentioned her size, Craig. Six foot four, that's an imposing figure. Defenses have to work around that. Offenses have to work around that. So to not have her out there, Cincinnati looks like a team that doesn't know quite what to do offensively and defensively without that looming figure in the middle. Still trying to figure it out, and that's what these non-conference tournaments are for. It's been growing pains for the Bearcats, but they're hoping by the time they get to American Conference play that they'll turn the corner. Associate head coach, Philip White, chatting with second referee, Tim Niels. And not sure what he's pointing out or in particular, he is here, of course, in the place of Molly Alvey, the head coach of the Bearcats, as he's taken over the reins for his wife, who is expecting a child imminently, is what we understand. Obviously, we wish her the best. Well, the Bearcats have changed things up in the libero spot now, as Abby Williams will put on the white jersey for the second set. Maya Eller was the libero in the first set. The Bearcats serving against the wind here in the second set. No, I'm not kidding. There is a wind here at Redbird Arena. Right now, it's blowing right to left. That's the way it usually does blow. Seems a little uh, stiff today. Nice middle attack from Lexi Vargas. Side out kill to get second set started for Illinois State. Redbird Arena might be the only arena where the flag will move during the national anthem during the wind. Oh, I was yes. noticing today, in particular, you mentioned, seems a little bit stronger than usual. Ever since 1990. Or 1989, I guess, technically. Harley Nolan elevated, growled at that volleyball and sent it down the line for a side out kill. So the teams have traded sides out, but looking at the side out stats, Illinois State, remember I said they were siding out early and often? Yes, uh, 11 of 14 for 78% side out percentage. Varga pass. Jankowicz goes to the left side, but Cincinnati read it like a book. And the nice double block from Jasmine Jones and Jade Tinglehoff. They said nothing doing to Jalen Keene. Williams, the libero serves. Illinois State goes left side, elevating. Lexi Wallen, but kept alive, slowed down by the block. Nolan's attack also slowed down by an Illinois State block. Keene with the slide play. And into our laps with the dig attempt. Keene's kill puts Illinois State even in the second set. You mentioned the move. Abby Williams takes over now at the libero position. It makes sense. After a difficult first set, you got to find something that will happen positively, and that's a change that can maybe just get something going positively for Cincinnati. Nolan again. Two blockers there to say no for the tie being Jankowitz and Keene. Nolan will try a little change-up shot this time, but Pence finds it. Armando blocked back at her. Once again, strong block put up by Cincinnati. Once again, it is Jones and Tinglehoff, and It'll be Tinglehoff to drop back to serve and quarterback the offense out of the back row. Bearcats did not lead until a couple of serves ago. Pence, a little bit of a short pass, but Jankwitz is there. Knew exactly where Jalen Keene would be. Eyes in the back of her head, but the Bearcats knew where her attack would be. They find it. Sent to Nolan again. Past the block and down the left line. And Cincinnati getting a little momentum here in the second set. Great start for the Bearcats. They've doubled up Illinois State. Now you have to build upon it. You got the 4-2 lead. Just keep working. Varga has to go down low, but makes the pass. Jankowitz still has to come to the back row to get it. Hook shot from Armando. Off the net to boot. Not an easy play. And she converted it for a Redbird side out and cut the deficit to one. Armando, once she gets up in the air, you know what she wants to do. She's looking cross court. And she's looking to hammer at home. That's her strength, and that's something that she is very, very adept at doing. Nolan Long. Point Illinois State, and our second set's even. You mentioned wanting to elevate and hammer. It sounded like in this afternoon's five-set loss to Seton Hall that the Redbirds were, I think, being frustrated a little bit by hammering, and maybe the block was there, maybe the digs were there and as a result started to back off a little bit with tips, and they have their place, but I've always been a big believer watching volleyball for a very long time that you want to keep that foot to the floor aggressiveness. And the same thing that Leah Johnson believes as well, I talked to her after the match, and 
she spoke about how she felt that Illinois State was tipping too many shots, going a little bit too maybe tentatively towards the net. She wanted them to be aggressive. She wanted those hammers up the line and cross court rather than maybe those tip shots. Carly Nolan just thanked the net before she got another volleyball, went back to serve on the let serve that drops in for an untouched ace. Pence, good pass. Jankowicz will go to Armando. A hook shot this time is kept alive. Tinglehoff at the blocks. That means Nolan will attack out of the back row. Redbirds are there. Allie Lyon tried to save one, crawled on the net. The Bearcats got a piece of it. Might have actually helped the Redbirds. Sent toward the net. They got the Bearcats out of system. You can't fault the front row for the Bearcats of slapping that volleyball that was crawling along the net. But I think the way that volleyball was going to fall, it was going to give Illinois State more trouble than had it not been sent a little deeper into the court. Just one man's amateur opinion. But this is such a reactionary sport. Yes, you have muscle memory. Yes, you have systems. But, you know, this, this game is fast. You have to just simply react. Much easier for us to judge over here sitting yeah. down and not having to worry about the ball coming at us. <laughs> oh, trust me. I hear all of you saying, shut up, Greg. <laughs> and I have for now 20-some-odd years, 25 years. My 26th year hanging around Redbird Volleyball, Illinois State Volleyball. Sent to the floor by the Bearcats. And that will bring in to the Bearcat lineup to serve Sabrina Wolf. She is a sophomore and a hometown girl out of Mount Notre Dame High School out of Cincinnati. We have a pro baseball team that's in playoff action already, not the Reds. The Florence Freedom in the Frontier League. They can wrap up their division series tonight at home on Northern Kentucky. My former employer. That's right. Tom was the number two voice uh, for the Florence Freedom two seasons ago, and they won their division, and they're in the Frontier League Baseball playoffs. Game four is tonight at UC Health Stadium. For our Cincinnati viewers, it'd be worth a, a check. They're actually, well, they're going on right now, I guess. So. But game five would be tomorrow if they would happen to lose. Back to volleyball, what do you say? Illinois State's able to put one home. Wolf came on to serve. She's from an athletic family. Her dad played basketball at NC State and Xavier. Her grandfather played football at Notre Dame. Pretty good bloodlines. And she comes on to serve. Now she'll exit out once again as Illinois State serves now. Comes by her talent honestly. Nolan steps up to the three-meter line for the pass. Right side attack by Ellie Ogle for the kill for Cincinnati. Illinois State just can't seem to crest the summit in this second set. The Bearcats have been holding them off. In to serve for the Bearcats is Emily Azara, freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky. Bearcats in the red on the left side of your screen. Tip by Wallen, a diving sacrificial dig by the Bearcats. Nicely done by Azara. But then it gets tangled up in the front row when it's returned by the Redbirds. It turns into an Illinois State point and a Courtney Pence service. Back into the Bearcats lineup, Ellie Ogle replacing Emily Azaro, who was in to serve. And that's exactly what Courtney Pence will do right now for Illinois State. High drive pass saved by Tinglehoff. Redbirds, though, gets the attack from Maya Muldrow and Jalen Keen answers it very quickly for Illinois State. Keen, just one of those all around great athletes, scored over 1,700 points as a basketball player, and how about she also started a goalie, made over 150 saves as a soccer goalie. Just a terrific all around athlete. Participates in the block, then gets a swing, now in the net play and keeps it alive. She's everywhere. Lexi Wall and hook shot. Kelly Ogle with the dig from the back line, it's Nolan to terminate the point. Mentioned Jalen Keene. She is from the same conference in high school as Courtney Pence out of the Central State 8 Conference, well known for their athletic talents. And uh, Jalen out of Jacksonville. She is a former Crimson. Kind of mistiming the block. Only one blocker up there on what ended up just being a down ball, but Maya Muldrow. Couldn't redirect it back to the Redbird net. Punch and counter punch here in the second set. A 
shot to Nolan, but the Redbirds read that. Jankowitz and Keene keep it alive, but the Bearcats go to work. Nolan tries again with a roll shot, and Pence is there, dumped by Jankowicz, but nothing doing, says Ellie Ogle. And then, once again, Jankowitz and Keene combine on the roof, and it's an Illinois State point. Redbirds lead. Jankowitz, another player that played in the, in the front line, played not a setter in high school, and you see it right there in the block, has the ability in the front row to get up there and be involved in the defensive side as well. Obviously, a setter needs offensive skills, and you have to have a setter that swings as this attack goes long, and Illinois State now extends their lead to a pair. But setting is just one of those talents that is acquired over many, many, many reps. And to see someone step into that role at the Division I level and succeed at it is very impressive. Pinballs around the Bearcats' back row sent free. Illinois State trying to convert. Wallen swings, but Abby Williams is there. Nolan again trickles off the block. Wallen finds it for the Redbirds. Keen blocked back at her. It was one on one. This time, Maya Muldrow won. Six foot one on six foot one. Keen on Muldrow, and Muldrow that time just out jumped Jalen Keen to swat one, that one right back in her face. Cincinnati within one. A huge second set for them. They got to have this one. Illinois State must sweep to win the title. Redbirds, though, some miscommunication on the pass on the rather short serve. And the Bearcats even things up at a dozen each. Williams, a little pop fly service, an infield fly, if you will, but Wallen gets the side out for Illinois State. See Wallen able to take on the block. Found a nice hole. Abby Williams backpedals and overpasses. That turns into net play and then sent finally free by Keene. Bearcats catch a break, but not for long. Carly Nolan is denied. Once again, Keene up in there primarily. Keene's been everywhere tonight for the Redbirds, and it seems like she knows this is an important victory. You don't want to go 0-6 on Saturdays to begin the year. Redbirds right now have not won on Saturday, looking for their first win on a Saturday, and Keene's been involved. Tumbles into the net, and it'll be a four-hit call when it came out of the net and back off of the attackers, so it'll be a tough set. going to try that out. We will keep that in the Missouri Valley Conference. Gives us an opportunity to talk and recap and Gives the analyze. coaches as well an opportunity to treat that almost like a halftime as you would in any other sport and make some adjustments and talk to your players for longer than the 115 they get during uh, timeouts. The, there, you know, I can see that going two ways. If you're with some momentum, you'd like to keep that going. It kind of goes away in that 10 minute or sometimes now 15 minute intermission as Carly Nolan gets it right back for Cincinnati. Tinklehoff serves the Bearcats setter. But on the other hand, I think more times than not is a nicely placed ball by Nolan. On the other hand, you know, it's, coaches love to coach, and that gives them an opportunity to do it. A rare miss hit by Jalen Keene on the slide play. Cincinnati once again gets a little momentum. And you talked, still to, believe. you talked about how breaks in action can slow down momentum. Illinois State definitely had the momentum. It seems like that timeout came at a good point for Cincinnati. They've refound their stride. They're within one. Overpass, but Jankowicz, when they get it back, is able to dump for the Redbirds, and the Bearcats cannot convert it. A point to Illinois State. Alley line comes in. It's that spot where the libero takes a seat, so this is one of the few rotations where Courtney Pence comes out. So you see Steph Jankowicz, the freshman setter for Illinois State. Jalen Keene Three-time first-teamer, fires the serve into the back row. Nolan just elevates, almost hangs in the air, and then swings hard, but Illinois State finds it. This time, a quick middle. One of my favorite plays in volleyball, and it's converted by Megan Kissel. She is just a freshman out of Mason, Ohio, Cincinnati area uh, city. Seven ties, two lead changes in the match, all in this second set as the Redbirds led wire to wire in the first. Whistle, two hit call appears. First ball handling violation signified, detected by Augie Werner, our first referee. 
Knots us at 16 for our eighth tie. Harley Nolan to serve. Pence has to take a little back pedal. Makes a good pass, though, to Jankowicz. Quick to alley line, but kept alive. Bearcats try line. Goes long on the attack from Ellie Ogle. Ogle one, of si Ogle, one of six players from the Cincinnati area. You mentioned a couple others. This is a team that is really based in their hometown and right around it of Cincinnati. They're pretty young. As we mentioned, they were a tournament team last year, but a lot of youth and so some growing pains will occur this season. Juma Armando, long, no touch detected. Just got air underneath it, got under it, and it'll be a Bearcats point for our ninth tie. In to serve, the usual rotation. Sabrina Wolf comes in, the 5'10 sophomore out of Cincinnati. Tosses that ball high and gives a little top spin to Courtney Pence to work with. Alley line is denied. Chrisanti Stamatu. I'm sure that'll be a block solo from our angle. We'll see it better on the replay. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably chalk that up as a block solo if I'm the stat guy. That uh, middle didn't close quickly enough. Give her a block solo. Almost blocking the set where the Bearcats, the Redbirds, swipe but hit the antenna with it. The Bearcats just a millimeter away from committing a violation, at least by our angle. I think correctly determined that it was not, but. Redbirds still go to work. I said it was the Redbird attack that went off the antenna. I lied to you. It was the block that actually went off the antenna. I didn't wait for the official's indication long enough. So the Redbirds then, after the service, are charged with another ball handling error on a two-hit call when it was rocketed back to them. Ogle serves for Cincinnati. Right side attack by Lexi Varga. Lexi puts it home. The junior out of Rockford. And Boylan Catholic High School converts for Illinois State. Neither team able to get an edge right now. Back and forth we go. Crucial upcoming six points. Determine a lot of what happens the remainder of this match. Libero to Libero. Williams keeps it in the back row. Tinglehoff goes to get it for a bump and then fisted across by Nolan. She went running into the net anyway, and that was an easy net call for Tim Neals to make. I think the attack went long anyway, and it's a point coming and going for Illinois State. Pence serves again to Williams to the back row. Tinglehoff with the short pass. Stamatu fires it into the Redbird block, which closes the door and slams the deadbolt. Two-point Redbird lead. Crucial sequence now for Cincinnati. Down one nothing in the match, down two points, and Illinois State right now only a four points away from closing out the second set. And as I say this, they take a timeout, obviously wanting to talk it over, maybe stop the momentum at least momentarily, knowing that this is a crucial spot in this match if Cincinnati does not win this set, they put themselves in a big, big hole to overcome, especially when you're 1-7 on the year. 2-0. 2-0 is a lot uh, different than 1-1. We say that in baseball on any count, but uh, it's even more so when you're talking about a best of five in volleyball. So Peter, uh, or Philip White, uh, handling the head coaching duties today. I doubt a lot changes. Uh, head coach has a lot of the administrative duties that is the face of the program so he has to acquire some of those duties as well but as far as you know the the way that they're coached and who's doing what not a lot changes I would dare say although they certainly miss their coach their head coach I would say as a husband and wife duo it helps to almost have the same brain I'm sure as, cer <laughs> as certainly someone who's been married you get to understand how the other person thinks and that might help him as well coaching thinking all right what would I what would my wife do if she was here so that's always something I'm sure he's thinking about as well, well that's why I got married because I she doesn't want any part of my brain <laughs> she didn't marry me for my looks either so I don't know what I'm I'm the one who uh as they say married up Saint Karen I call her Redbirds buy a pair trying to go up 2-0 with Courtney Pence to deal Williams passed to the three-meter line for Tinglehoff. And a telegraphed, shall we say, offensive set on the slide play as Maya Muldrow is vetoed by 
Lexi Wallen and Jalen Keene. Redbirds up three with three to go toward the intermission. From the back line, Nolan, miss hit. Redbirds by four. And this is the stretch where we said someone was going to establish themselves and maybe pull away in the match. Illinois State has done just that. It's danger time. It's panic time. If you're Cincinnati, you got to figure out a way to get these last couple points and get back in this match. Off the block, popped it up for the Redbirds to get to it, but then they deliver an overpass of sorts, and it's put right back to the hard court, mostly by Maya Muldrow. Serving. Kasanti Stamatu, the freshman out of Greece. A knuckle serve, good pass though by Redbirds' Kendall Meyer. But offense ends there. Into the net, dug out for the fourth hit. That's one too many, point Cincinnati. It's interesting how Stamatu waits for the ball facing out to the back door, as I like to call it, with her toes on the back line. Waiting for the ball handlers to give her a new sphere to work with. Nice dig by Williams. Confusion in the back row, who's gonna take it? Tinglehoff was there, Stamatu almost got in her way. And the Redbirds convert. Nicely done. Once again, Jalen Keene puts the Redbirds at the doorstep of the second set. And Lexi Vargas serves. Good pass, Tinglehoff quick to the middle, crawls on the net out of Muldrew. But the Redbirds get to it. Down the line from Wallen, dug right back at her, served up onto a platter, and she placed it right just outside of Reggie's main to put the Redbirds into the locker room, up two sets to none. Had to work harder for it this time. Cincinnati settled down just a little bit, but the Redbirds seem to be in control of this one in the finale of the Redbird Classic. After a difficult five set match, you go all the way 17, 15, the fifth set. I worried just as much about the Redbirds' physicality as much as their emotional state, and they're able to overcome that loss and go up two sets to none on Cincinnati, looking to go two and one on this Redbird Classic. Well, the Bearcats will try to regroup, the, or the Bearcats will try to regroup. The Redbirds will see what they need to do to get a third set win and capture their own tournament title. We'll be back to talk about things on our country financial intermission right after this from Doug Collins Court. In 11 years, this is a big deal. 
So for tickets and more information, call 309-438-8000 or visit GoRedbirds.com. The Missouri Valley Conference celebrating 25 years of women's athletics. Can't wait. This conference is so good in volleyball. It is a true college power conference in volleyball already with some big wins over top 25 teams this season. We'll be back to talk some stats in just a little bit as Illinois State has that two set to none lead at our intermission. Well, numbers often don't lie, and they are not here in this case at Illinois State University's Redbird Arena on Doug Collins Court, where Illinois State has a two-set to none lead over Cincinnati in the finales. You can see the eight-kill edge, the two-to-one block advantage. Uh, they're obviously serving very well, talking about Illinois State, but look at the hitting percentage. You know, Illinois State's converting one out of every four of their swings, and Cincinnati is not converting even one out of every ten swings. So some uh, pretty indicative numbers of this match. It's just Illinois State with a little more experience, and I think it's showing, Tom. Yeah, and that second set, we have to give credit to Cincinnati. We saw a really good effort. I think they gave us their best effort in that second set. They came out. They battled. We saw some moves be made. We saw Abby Williams take over as the libero. That was a move that produced some success. They had the early set lead. We talked about how important it was for them to keep that that the Redbirds creep back in, and eventually the Redbirds, it was tied at 18 all, and the Redbirds kind of cruised from there on out. Cincinnati could not threaten down the stretch. Bearcats already making their way out onto the floor here at Doug Collins. Court. Leah Johnson choosing to hang on to her Redbirds just for a little while longer. They've had a lot of volleyball already played, and they're about to embark on their eighth set of the day, but they're hoping it's a victorious one as we'll be bringing you some two-set highlights at our third set next here at the Redbird Classic on Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena.
With Tom Prizman, I'm Greg Hallbleib. Redbirds of Illinois State, the hosts, lead the Bearcats of Cincinnati two sets to none. Even Reggie Redbird, the Illinois State mascot, apparently does not have a smartphone. So <laughs> he's just kind of enjoying everybody else. But let's take a look at some highlights here. You can see where Illinois State just had to go out to the local home improvement store and put out a new order of shingles because the roofing party has been very strong here in the first two sets. Eight blocks for the Redbirds, as we mentioned. And it's been largely Jalen Keene getting a lot of help from Steph Jankowitz, but can't forget the effort either on the offensive end. Lexi Wallen with the conversion. And just solid play up front for Illinois State as they have taken the advantage here over the Bearcats. Yeah, you're watching all those highlights. We don't always talk about her because she's in the middle of every play, though. Steph Jankowitz really impressed me in the earlier match today, and then to respond with a similar performance after going five sets, she's out there pretty much the entire time. She doesn't get subbed out like everyone else. She's out there for the entirety of the five set or earlier, and now she's been out here for the first two sets, and as you say, Greg, she quarterbacks the offense, and so far she's having a Tom Brady-esque performance. It's been very good for Illinois State as they lead two sets and none. You saw the Bearcats there. Now you see the Redbirds being led back out onto the floor. The Redbird cheerleaders and that very large and expansive Reggie Redbird logo on the flag leading them out as well. The Redbirds in white, up two sets to none. As their first-year coach, Leah Johnson, in the red in the middle. Leah talking about my history with the Missouri Valley Conference. I remember her quite well, thank you very much, as a such a solid back row player at Missouri State University under the dean of the Missouri Valley Conference coaches, Melissa Stokes. And she's very familiar with the Valley, as you mentioned, as a player. And then as a coach, she did a wonderful job building up that SIU Edwardsville program. She came in, Division II program, by the time she exits, She's the Ohio Valley Coach of the Year, and she's taken that program to the promised land, and now she comes to Illinois State after the surprise departure, you would say, of Melissa Myers' late resignation in June. Illinois State, you luck, would say, say would you, you would say is probably pretty lucky to get a head coach like Leah Johnson at that time of the year, and she's inherited a good program and trying to keep the front foot moving forward. They have uh, found a good one, I do believe. And speaking of, we were saying that Molly Alvey, the uh, head coach of the University of Cincinnati, expecting a child imminently. Leah Johnson has new Bambino in the house, remember, as well. So when she was introduced as the head coach, I believe she was still with child, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember that correctly. She basically has two new children, the Illinois State program and her own child. <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy time in her life, I'm sure. I asked her at the Redbird preview, have you slept at all, really, since we announced your arrival here on campus? Oh, she's got all sorts of energy. You, know, you never guess it. Hard tip by Muldrew. Redbirds cover it. Wallen double blocked, and the Redbirds can't untangle it. Nicely done by the right side of the Bearcats. Tinglehoff primarily. She got some help from Muldrow who checks out, Muldrow does, is coming in for Cincinnati is Megan Kissel. She'll go into the front row to join Tinglehoff and Carly Nolan. Williams, the libero, remains as the libero coming on in the second set for Cincinnati and a little untouched tip by Lexi Wallen. A little slow to come up and cover that were the Bearcats on that little pop fly tip over the block. Varga to serve for Illinois State. A Redbird sweep, we understand from sports information contact and SID extraordinaire Matt Wing, the tournament would go to the Redbirds as they misfire on that attack into the corner. It gives it back to the Bearcats. But if the Redbirds sweep, they win the tournament. But it's three two-and-one teams. A lot of math involved, so <laughs> neither of us... We're math majors in college, so we, we, we defer to math. He has the abacus. Net service gives it right back to Illinois State. He has the abacus and whatever else that they need to figure all that out. There are a number of tiebreakers head-to-head, -head, although a three-way tie head-to-head -head is almost impossible. Then you go to uh, set differential. Then you go to points differential. And then by that point, I was 
my eyes were glazing over heavily as he was trying to explain it to me. Pounded on the middle attack by Jalen Keene. Point Illinois State. We've talked a lot about Jankowitz, but what she's done as a freshman to come in here, there was already Jordan Weatherless, a very good upperclassman setter who had competed for playing time, and Jankowitz has come in and established herself as a starter as a freshman. That's very impressive. And also good to know that Weatherless is there ready to go, if necessary, as a backup of any sort. Nolan tried to steer it around the block, but it took too hard of a right turn on her and ended up outside of the fog line. Not quite to the ditch, but out of bounds nonetheless. Redbird's up by a pair. Wallen still serving. She scoots all the way left this time. Bad pass. Gets the Bearcats out of system, and that's the result. No touch detected. Did not expect one. We had a good vantage point as you see Carly Nolan well off the pin for that swing. Wallen still back there for the Redbirds. Pass to Matu, overpass. Keen is there to just kind of tip it back down and cause problems for the Bearcats front row. Jalen Keen's been everywhere tonight, and she has been fantastic around the net. Any of those 50-50 balls, they always seem to end up in Jalen Keene's hands, and she's usually able to knock it down to the ground. Oh, what a tough serve. Lexi Wallen got a little net assist. And Philip White says, we've got to slow this down. As the Bearcats take the timeout, and Illinois State is trying to shove it into high gear here in the third set on Doug Collins' court at Redbird Arena. The Valley on ESPN3, brought to you by Ford, inviting you to visit your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. With Tom Preisman, Greg Hallbleib, Doug Collins, go to Redbird Arena. This Redbird Classic coming to a close, our final match. Illinois State trying to win their own tournament title. A hook shot from the middle from Megan Kissel. Illinois State finds it, sends it in front of Williams. And a point Illinois State as Wallen is still at the serving line. Juma Armando collects the kill for Illinois State. Frustrating for Cincinnati. That was a great defensive sequence and still not able to really ever get on the attack. Cincinnati going into that timeout is they get it back on the side out kill. Cincinnati was hitting a negative 250. Redbirds hitting 200 in the third set. That was going into the timeout. Varga, strong pass to Jankowicz. Shoots it over to Armando, but a nice up by Williams. Off the floor, sent free. Nice recovery. Jankowicz will try Armando again. Angles it to the floor, this time in front of Nolan, who's in the back row. I think today is the coming out party for Juma Armando. She seems like she's really coming to her own in the earlier match and now continuing that here in the nightcap. Seems like she's going to be a big factor for this Illinois State team going forward. Did not play last night. A little back set, ripped home. Nicely done by Ellie Ogle to get it right back for the Bearcats. Bearcats will send Williams out. The libero takes a seat on this rotation. And coming in to serve will be Sabrina Wolf. Pence, solid pass. Slide play for Alley Line. Covered up, though. Nolan from the back row. Pence is there for Illinois State. 
Quick little shoot for line, but it was Muldrow's saw it coming and closed the door on it. Illinois State played a two hour and 20 minute match earlier today. I think they're trying to avoid having this one go the similar length, trying to end it here in the third set. Redbirds will see a lot of Redbird Arena, but uh, heading on the road next weekend. Boy, I saw the net go crazy up there, but nothing whistled. I don't think that was the volleyball. Maybe it was. Armando through the double block, just powered it through. The transfer from Chicago State having a good third set. Redbirds hit the road next weekend. They'll go to the Wildcat Classic down at Arizona. They'll have a midweek contest at Northern Illinois before that, while Cincinnati will travel to the Michigan Challenge in Ann Arbor. Jankowitz serving for Illinois State. Back set from the back row. Ogle going to get it is Lexi Wallen, but the Redbirds can't do anything with it. Ogle back to serve once more for Cincinnati. Getting a brand new arena, University of Cincinnati, next year. Right now they play, the volleyball plays at uh, St. Ursula Academy. There are some programs that just take advantage of the facilities at other high schools. It trickles on the net and stays inbounds barely. A little net assist there. Excited about their new digs, I know they are in Cincinnati. What a great sports town. We already talked about the baseball. Pounded home from Alley Line. Lines had a nice bounce back match. We talked about how she was looking for a bounce back in there. Gets a great opportunity over the block, no doubt about it. Had a pretty good hole in there, but I think even if that block's closed, it's got a tough time with that one. Swatted across by Muldrow, but the Redbirds are there. Amando in the back row. Sent free by Varga. Slide play, tooled off the block by Muldrow. Cincinnati scores on the effort. Redbirds are still up by three. Cincinnati hanging around, though. That's all you can really ask for. Down two sets, nothing. The effort, you want to see it in the third set, even if this might be decided already. Cincinnati trying to hang around and continue to fight in this match. Santhi Stamatu serving for the Bearcats. Varga into the double block. Redbirds tried to untangle it, but they ran out of contact. The block for the Bearcats. Keeps Stamatu at the line. Now we're later in the match. So that means the floor moppers have to get to work. That's our momentary delay. Stamato brings some international flair to the Bobcats from Greece originally, a freshman. Kind of a hop serve, I call those. Pence makes the pass. Upside attack, hit the sideline. Carly Nolan. She's been held fairly quiet. Now Leah Johnson wants a timeout. Hasn't had to spend the stoppages. Nolan collects her eighth kill to force Illinois State to go into a timeout. Leah Johnson chatting with her assistant coaches, associate head coach Eric Plunkett, and assistant coach Peter Datasinga, as they are carryovers from Miss Melissa Meyer's staff, good solid staff, as Leah Johnson takes over the program. I won't say it was a turnkey operation, but it was pretty close to one. Difficult anytime you have to come in in June. The season starts so soon after that as a first year head coach. But for Leah Johnson, she inherited a program that was in a really good state, was trending in the right direction, had a lot of upperclassmen led by Jalen Keene that you can count on. And so while you say it's not a turnkey operation, it certainly was one where you, you could come in and rely on those upperclassmen almost as assistant coaches to say, okay, what was going on before? What do we need to work on? And what can we improve to have a successful 2017 season? Melissa Myers obviously established such a great foundation. And 
two seasons ago, accomplished a rarity in the Missouri Valley Conference annals and running the table. That just doesn't happen in this league, not very often. Illinois State now hitting just 105 in the third set. Cincinnati is actually out hitting the Redbirds, 143 to 105. Redbirds still up by one on serve receive, and Alley Line just miss hits one. You may, Tom, may be starting to see some of the effects of this being the eighth set of the day. And that's part of the reason the Redbirds need to end this right here. You don't want the sled to get to a fourth set all of a sudden. Cincinnati has momentum. They're the fresher team, and at that point, anything could happen. Service error gives the Redbirds a break, and Jalen Keene checks back in for Alley Line, comes into the front row. So you've got Wallen, Keene, and Varga up there for Steph Jankowicz to choose from. In the back row, Kendall Meyer, and serving Courtney Pence. Dumped by Tinglehoff, kept alive by Varga. Wallen into the solo block of Tinglehoff. Now Keene, a hard middle attack off Williams. Sent back to the floor by Ogle and sacrificed the body to do it. What a great defensive play, but the Redbirds just simply converted quickly. The Bearcats were in big time transition with a capital T, and Jankowicz was able to make an easy dump right onto Reg's beak. Jankowicz that time, a nice little two ball, but a great sequence. What a play by Cincinnati just to keep this one alive, going to their own bench to keep that one in play. Back to live action. Overpass actually went outside of the antennas. Almost immediately, Philip White was up in a bit of a protest to the second referee, Tim Niels. I don't know. It wasn't a protest. I, I beg your pardon. I think he was double-checking subs. The pained expression for, was for another reason. <laughs> And you can understand it, but again, it's a it's a youthful Bearcat squad, and they'll get the service right back here with Tinglehoff, the setter, the server. Baker's dozen each here in the third set. Pence backpedals and passes the knuckle serve. Keen's attempt dug by Williams. Ogle off the block and out the back door, and the Bearcats take a lead here in the third. Tinklehoff still at the stripe. Meyer, good pass. Wallen growls, pounds. And a net violation, I believe, is what was whistled. I was trying to see who Tim Niels had detected. And I think Ogle was up in there. So it gives it back to Illinois State, and it ties our third set at 14. Nolan backpedals a pass to her. And Ogle is vetoed by Jankowitz and Keene. Jalen Keene once again getting involved. Get up and knock it away for the Illinois State Redbirds. Keene, she's pretty much having a typical match for her. Anybody else, this would be an outstanding performance. And that angle actually showed a bit of a hole in the block, but... Not when you have the wingspan of those two, and the net serve will give it right back to Cincinnati. Nobody uh, able to build momentum right now, Greg. 15-15, both teams trading possession and an opportunity off the side out now for the Bearcats. Nolan's jump serve is passed by Wallen. Quick to Keene, blocks loaded up for Williams. Bump by Tinklehoff, Stamatu dumps line, goes over, Stamatu just tries again, hammers it home. Bearcats now surge in front. It's kind of like a couple of race cars on the backstretch where one bumper goes ahead of one car and then the other car's bumper goes ahead of the first car. Armando goes long. Redbirds look around, hopeful for a touch. It would seem to be a bit of a pipe dream and there was none detected. A timeout now, Illinois State. They burn their second timeout. Of this to a fourth set, Cincinnati, you would say, with momentum after winning the third set and having not played since 10.30 this morning, which is still, I'm sure they're a little bit weary, but not certainly as weary as the Redbirds. That would be a huge opportunity for Cincinnati and one they'd look to take advantage of. First things first, though, Greg, 
They have to win this third set. Backs against the wall, two sets to none. Have to find a way, 17-15, to keep this two-point advantage. Seton Hall was the team that beat Illinois State in that five-set match earlier, the 12-30 match this afternoon that ended at about 240, or 250, I should say. And Seton Hall came out, and they were swept by Dayton. You could start to see it in the third set that uh, Seton Hall was just about out of gas. That tank hadn't been refueled fully. They switched jerseys, but that didn't fool anybody. You're still pretty <laughs> tired from that five-set match playing 70 minutes later or so. Yeah. For Illinois State, at least they got a few more hours off, but certainly they're still a little weary themselves. Jim Armando rolls off the net. Was a blocker touch? No, none detected, and it'll go to Cincinnati. Illinois State appeals vehemently for one, but all four officials, the line judges and our referees say, nope, I think they were right. Raises the net, but Varga makes the pass while going face first. Ogle, long. I heard a second contact there, and I think Cincinnati's hoping for the same thing on a touch, but the contact apparently was grazing the top of the net with the volleyball, and so that attack goes long and goes to Illinois State. And a net serve, not the time for it, but that's maybe a time where... I mean, I mean, Leah Johnson and none of the Redbirds would ever use it as an excuse, but it might be a weary kind of a thing. And not a great time as well. Jalen Keene now has to exit. Rotation keeps her off the floor for the next few minutes, so an opportunity and an advantage for Cincinnati. Armando converts. Gets the side out for Illinois State. Armando is so dangerous if you get her on the wings attacking cross court and she's able to get enough power behind it. Not that many people in this tournament or across the country could stop her when she gets momentum. Jankowicz serves. Williams keeps that pass in the back row. Ogle has to bump the set. Finds Nolan, but nice dig by Jankowicz. So Pence turns into the setter. Rocketed across for Williams. Hooked by Stamato. Pence another nice dig. Varga from the right pin for Illinois State. Bearcats scramble. Ogle tips. Almost gets the Redbirds, but Pence covers it. Slap of a down ball from Armando. Punched across by Stamat, who Pence is there for the Redbirds. Hook shot line ends the long rally. Point Illinois State. Cuts it to one. And those long rallies add up, and they mean a little bit more. That's an important point for the Redbirds. Instead of being down three, they're only behind one with momentum on their side. Boy, did they take it out of you. Long rallies are really tiring. Because they don't wait for you to catch your breath, I might add, if you haven't noticed. That whistle blows right away saying serve. Long point Illinois State. Jankowicz still at the line, and we are tied in the third set. We're going to find out the medal of this Cincinnati team right here. Do they have enough to pull out this third set and force us to go to four? Nolan to her haunches for the pass and a quick attack that Muldrow says find and dig this. One point lead for Cincinnati now. A backpedaling pass by Wallen and a back set for line from the right pin but the Bearcats are there but Nolan has to deliver the free ball. Armando angle shot that Williams keeps off the hardwood. Stamatu, but Pence is there. Libero's doing a good job in this point. Williams off her bicep into the Cincinnati bench at a point, Illinois State. All square once more at 20. Juma Armando once again. That was a phenomenal, blistering shot from the right side. She's having a day to remember, and she's making an impact and etching her name in this lineup for future outings. Checks out on this rotation on the end of the bench, and Cincinnati gets the side out quickly from the right side from Maya Muldrow. Be interesting now for Indi Illinois State to figure out where the offense is coming from with both Keene and Armando on the bench. Alley line, Lexi Varga and company have to step up. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, third set. Stamat who serves. Pence delivers a good pass. Jankowicz with the bump set. Change-up shot from Wallen. Bearcats scramble to get it, and there's Nolan. Dug by the Redbirds, Steph Jankowicz. Net play. One by Wallen for Illinois State. 
We're tied again. She who hits second usually wins. And not only does Illinois State win the point, they get Jalen Keene back on the floor as well on this rotation. Very important for Illinois State now. They can use their best attacker and run the offense through her in the final four points, the final push of this third set. As we look over the left shoulder of Courtney Pence, ready to serve while the moppers do their job, but Ellie Ogle just says, nah, I know where it is. I'll take care of it. By the way, joining Keene in the front row, Lexi Wallen and Lexi Varga. A lot of Lexi going on. A lot of offense going on. Williams low, but a good pass at the 3-meter line. Nolan angles. Pence gets it. Here's Wallen for Illinois State. Dug by Stamato. Jankowicz bumps from off the floor. Blocked back from Ogle's attack, but the Bearcats will run it again. Slowed up by the block of Varga and Keene. Pence is the setter now for Varga. Goes line and just wide. Point Cincinnati. They wipe the sweat off their brow on that one as the Bearcats take a one-point lead. That's a gutsy decision to let that ball go near that line. Very, very close. Pays off for Cincinnati in a huge way. Now they have a one-point advantage down the stretch of this third set. Keen passes. They go to Varga sneaking up, but she hit it wide. Miss hit, and now the Bearcats are in control in this very close third set. Remember, Illinois State's out of timeouts. Varga out, coming in for Illinois State is Michaela Leonard. She is a hometown girl. The transfer from Toledo coming in for the first time in this match in a big spot. Went to school here in the Twin Cities at Normal Community High School. Very good volleyball program. Keen gets it back for Illinois State. A tip off one blocker. And Cincinnati up by just one now. Now out goes Leonard, in goes Varga. Lexi Varga serves for Illinois State. Stamato pass it a good one for Nolan, but Pence another fine dig. Wallen power tip. Ogles there for Cincinnati. Here's Nolan off the one blocker, slowed it up for Varga. Dumped by Jankowitz, attempted. Right back at the Redbirds, a quick middle to Keene in transition, and she pounds it home. We're not at 23 again. Jalen Keene, we can hear it on the floor. She was calling for the ball. She wanted it. <laughs> and much like your best player in any sport, she got the ball and she delivered for her team. Ties this match, ties, rather ties this set at 23 all. And now we're going to have a fun conclusion down the stretch here between Cincinnati and Illinois State in this third set. As you saw, Philip White, the associate head coach, for these Bearcats, signify and request the timeout. As Illinois State and Cincinnati in the third set with the Redbirds up 2-0. And now, take a look there, as they're going to to work very quickly on Jalen Keene. What they're just, I think, doing is getting another tape job. It's not like a, a re-injury of any sort. But and they're fighting against the clock, 30 seconds. So Jalen Keene, this will be the quickest tape job. It's almost like a pit stop this, in NASCAR. You read my mind. This is like NASCAR. And, and they're only half done with it, but... Megan Smith is the athletic trainer for, and you know, I am guessing she's taped a few ankles in her day. Still going. Just has the heel left and looks like she's just about done as this timeout yeah. is over. Because if you don't do it right, then don't bother with it. So she has to do it right. Jalen Keene gets the sock back on. And she's got to get out onto the floor. The horn has sounded, and she has to hurry and knot up the shoe. And Illinois State only with five players on the floor right now. And Leah Johnson's over there. She's going to try to stall things out a little bit more and ask if she, how many subs she has. Just anything right now. It's like the pitching coach going out to the mound while the reliever's getting his last few warm-up tosses in. Anything to buy some in. time. That's, that's impressive. The serve goes just long, though, and Cincinnati is at set point. And serving is Tinglehoff. Good pass by Pinwell, stays in the back row. Varga has to bump the set. Walling off the block, though, and Cincinnati can't get to it. So we'll play at least one extra point. 
Oh, you have to hand it to the Bearcats, though, in this third set. And Keen, Keen retying her shoe now. Trying to make sure that the double knot is good, and she is feels comfortable out there in a crucial spot for Illinois State. Wallen serves. Tinglehoff will go behind her to Ogle, who tools it. Another set point for Cincinnati. Nolan serves for the Bearcats. Tough serve, Pence over pass, net play, and Jankowicz got into the net, and that ends the third set. Cincinnati stays alive, and they pull out a 26-24 third set win over Illinois State. What a hard-fought win for Cincinnati. It takes a lot to do this, not to mention they've kind of uh, gone to the whip on the table crew. We have a very good table crew at Illinois State University uh, for all of the athletics. Uh, generally, the conference does not simply use the home table crew for their conference tournaments. The Redbird table crew has been utilized at conference tournaments. In the past, I know they were the table crew for the women's basketball, and a lot of those same people are over there. So just want to give them a lot of kudos and props right now. And I would dare say that they will probably stay here and be the table crew for the league tournament, Thanksgiving week. Always enjoy that. I just loved that. We do the awards on Thanksgiving at about 1230, and uh, we'll do that here in the arena. And then we'll start with first-round play later that night. Let you digest your turkey and then come on out to Redbird Arena. Semifinals are Friday, and then the championship is that Saturday afternoon. Four in the afternoon once again this year. All on the Valley on ESPN. So we're ready to go on the fourth set. The Bearcats will serve. The Matu will serve. Ogle, Muldrew, Nolan, and Tinklehop, the setter, on the floor for the Bearcats. Meyer passes for Illinois State. Wallen slaps a down ball. It's Damato gets two for the Bearcats. Nolan from the left pin. Pence reaches off the floor to get to it. Shoved over by Wallen. Williams had to scramble just to give a free ball to the Redbirds. That's Wallen, one blocker. Went to the Redbird side, Varga reacted in time. And then converted by Wallen at the left pin. Tooled it off Tinglehoff's palm. And Greg, I think we have to give a lot of credit to Cincinnati in that third set. Felt like a lot of teams might have rolled over in that situation. One and seven on the year, final game of this tournament, maybe wanting to go home. Credit to Cincinnati, they fought, they won that third set, and now they're back in this match. Anything can happen down the stretch. Absolutely. Interestingly enough, it also means that the Redbirds cannot win their own classic now. Even with a victory in four sets. Well, you'll have three two and one teams if that happens, but now well, I'll just let Matt Wing come over and tell us uh, yeah, tell us who won the tournament. Because I can't figure it out. Punched over by Keane. The dig is up and over and way out, although a nice effort on the dive by Ellie Ogle. There is a way we were told by Matt Wing if it went four sets. 
Illinois State would have to win by a certain number of points. It was going to be a high number of points that was probably unreachable. They did win 25-14 in the first set, so if it was a similar type set, maybe possible, but looks like Dayton would likely be your champion at this point. Well, you were still paying attention. I had glazed over long <laughs> into that explanation by that point, so <laughs> I am kidding. Overpass, and Jankowicz ends it. A quick start for Illinois State in the fourth. And I think the Redbirds have come out with a pretty simple message. Let's play like it's the first set all over again. Find one extra energy reserve and put away the Bearcats early in the set. Oldro, slide play, blocks loaded up for Pence. That's Wallen, the angle shot goes wide. There was no touch and a point to the Bearcats. Their first of our fourth set. Greg Hallblad, Tom Prizman. It's Tom's second match of the day. He called the earlier Illinois State match on the radio. So you're hanging in there. You're going for the energy drink. You're going for the stretch out. That was converted by Jalen Keene to give it back to Illinois State. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, and I only can imagine what it was like if you're actually playing these matches. We're just sitting down and talking about them, but this is certainly an endurance test, and that's why these early season tournaments are so valuable. You really find out a lot about your club in these types of tournaments. Ogle, a back row tip. Illinois State, no problem with it. Armando ends it. Lexi Wallen for Illinois State. Nolan powers it through the block, but she followed through and hit the net. It'll be wiped out. Tim Neals caught it, the second referee down on the floor. It is not argued. Or if it was, it was briefly. Frustrating for Cincinnati. Inching closer if that had stayed their way instead. Now down four points. Pinballs around, but the Bearcats give it to Illinois State. And the Redbirds convert. Once again, three-time Missouri Valley Concert first-teamer, Jalen Keene. Timeout, Bearcats. I was gonna, just about to say, it felt like this set was maybe slipping away from the Bearcats. Match right there, Jalen Keene just converted the last kill to get us into the timeout. Nice day at the office for Jalen Keene, the senior out of Jacksonville, Illinois. Jalen Keene, we've said it more than once today, a lot of the Illinois State offense will go through her, and today is no exception, as she is our player of the match. Our player of the game is brought to you by Meyer. You're just minutes away from saving with M Perks. Find out more at Meyer.com. Keene's been phenomenal, 18 kills in this match. 13 earlier today. Or I'm sorry, 19 earlier today in that five set match against uh, Seton Hall. And uh, she had 13 last night. It's a good day at the office, that's 50 kills. Good weekend at the office, I guess. Off the digger, out the back door, Cincinnati converts. CZ Stamatu collects the kill, and it is Tinglehoff to serve. A little sideways hop out of that. The overpass is deposited back down onto Reggie's main by Carly Nolan. Not a bad crowd on this Saturday night. This has always been such an energetic place to play. Opponents really feel it. The slide attack went down. We had a net violation anyway, so you have it coming and going. They will not take the kill away from Jalen Keene. She'll go back to serve. The block peeled off and got a shoulder into the net, but Keene will still get the kill. Keene down balls. Nolan down line, and it went wide. Bearcats wanted a, oh, they did detect the touch. The line judge did not, but he was busy getting out of the way of the volleyball, and the touch was detected by first referee Augie Werner. Was 7-1, now 8-5. Good response from Cincinnati out of that timeout. 
as they battle back in this fourth set. Net service from Nolan, though. And Illinois State extends the lead back to four as a result with setter Steph Jankowicz going back to serve. Steph out of Farmington Hills, Michigan, Harrison High School. And she trades a net serve with the Bearcats. Muldrow back into the front row, checking out for the Bearcats' Kissel. And in to serve in that position is Sabrina Wolf. Into the Illinois State lineup and being rejected in her first swing is Sydney Holt, the freshman out of the St. Louis area, Wildwood, Missouri, Eureka High School. We've had a few Redbirds come through that school in that town. And another net serve. I think we're seeing the effect of earlier matches in the day for both sides. Some tired leg on those jump serves and a couple now in a row have gone into the netting on both sides. Don't forget, as much as we've talked about Illinois State fatigue, there is no doubt Cincinnati, a little bit of fatigue as well. You factor in the travel as well. That does not make it an easy road trip for the Bearcats. They get on the bus. It'll take them about four and a half hours, maybe five to get home. Give a take, punched home. Five if he runs into traffic. He should be able to make that. The bussy, if he's a good bussy, he can make that trip in under four and a half. Allie Line with the slide play, puts it home. Made that trip many a time. <laughs> so, so is Mr. Prizeman. Important right now for the Redbirds. Only a three-point advantage looking to open it up here and create some more space. Cincinnati's hanging around, and we saw what that could happen. In the third set, they hung around Greg, and eventually they pulled ahead and eventually won the third set. So when Illinois State's in front, they have an opportunity to put away the Bearcats need to do it. That's, that's you saw a classic example as you just outlined as to the importance of putting teams away. Keen swings, Williams keeps it alive for the Bearcats. There's Stamatu, just a little bit long. And I know that head coach Leah Johnson will probably not be happy this is going to a fourth set, regardless of what happens from here on out. I'm sure she'll have a message to the club about after this game of closing teams out, as the Redbirds could not do so in the third set. Muldrow, did the block get a piece of that? Didn't really matter, I guess. As Courtney Pence now serves for Illinois State, and that forces a Cincinnati timeout. As the Redbirds and first-year coach Leah Johnson chats with her club. She just had some instructions from for Kendall Meyer and now meets with her staff, Eric Plunkett and Peter Datasinga. Redbirds picked to finish third in the Missouri Valley Conference this season. Another tough, tough Valley year. Both Missouri State and UNI, Northern Iowa, have posted wins over top 25 clubs this season already. And Redbird certainly pushed Florida State to the brink yes. as well. And you saw earlier today they pushed a Big East opponent, Seton Hall, to the brink. And well, with all this conference realignment, I don't know if you'd call the American a power conference anymore, but certainly a top quality conference and a good win if you're able to get it over Cincinnati a team that made the tournament last year out of certainly a conference that earns at-large bids and is one of the better ones in the country. Well, obviously that league took a step up when Wichita State joined, and they're getting their top 25 now this year. So they would have, you know, that, that increases that league's profile on the volleyball side. Well, the Illinois State hitting 238 here in the fourth set to just 059 for Cincinnati. 23 ties in this match, eight lead changes. In the third set alone, 12 ties, four lead changes. Illinois State has led the entire fourth set so far, though. Stamatu finds a hole, a little roll shot. Bearcats cut it to four. Good 
Another tough Missouri Valley Conference in volleyball, not just Missouri State and UNI, Illinois State. Hit the back line. Boy, just barely got the strike. And Sydney Holtz with the kill and she'll serve. Six foot one inch freshman. Listed as a middle and a right side. Harley Nolan finds the floor. That's a hard ball to convert. Lexi Bargain to the Illinois State lineup. Libero, Abby Williams serving for Cincinnati. Wallen down the line. Block got a piece of it. Mostly Tinglehoff. Combining was Kissel, but they don't get credit. Getting credit for the kill. Illinois State. Wallen with the number, and she'll go back to serve. Birds by a handful, and Juma Armando comes back into the Illinois State front row. That's where she joins Jalen Keene and the setter, Steph Jankowitz. From the back row, Ogle clipped the tape. Pence is there for the dig. Keen, a middle hook shot. Set free over her head by Nolan. Illinois State on offense. Armando angles for a winner. She has pace, as they say, <laughs> on, her, on her shots. She's just been a terrific pickup. To get someone like that as a senior transfer in, to only have one year to be able to play, but she's been able to contribute right away, that's a sign your program's heading in the right direction. Williams pass, here's Nolan. Changed up her shot, smart decision. Got a lot of experience that goes into that decision and she found the kill. And Armando transferred in when Illinois State didn't even have a head coach. They were still in the process of finding a head coach and I think that tells you what you need to know about the program and the way Armando and other people feel about this program. Doesn't necessarily, obviously the head coach matters in a lot of ways, but how the overall program is in the university as well, that matters these players as well, and Armando saw something that she liked, even without knowing who the head coach would be. I think Illinois State has a history of finding good people for that. Larry Lyons, the athletic director, as we said before, made a really good hire with Coach Johnson. Armando angles again, but Williams keeps it off the floor, and her overpass over Dig is off the floor enough that Illinois State has to run offense, so much so that Marga down ball. And a tip by Ogle at the right pin. Earns the Bearcats the point. You can just sense that it's the last, or maybe not the last set of the day. Cincinnati hopes it's not. Armando. Nice digs to Mato. Nolan into the double block and back at her. Nolan again. Twirls one, but Armando is there. Keen reaches, swats. Stamatu is there. Free ball. Wallen looked like she slipped and almost couldn't make the pass. She was trying to stop her momentum, but the birds converted, and it is Keen who blasts it off Nolan's shoulder. And it seems like any time Illinois State needs a big play, Jalen Keen is there to provide it for the Redbirds. Energy a little bit lacking right now. You can tell Illinois State is definitely fading in terms of that energy meter. But Keen comes up, makes a big block, and now she's one of the best servers on this team, goes to the service line. Service error right back to Cincinnati. Here's Carly Nolan. She's been given permission to put the ball into play. The high tossing jump server. Sends it to Pence for Illinois State. Slide play line, blocked back at the Redbirds. Jankowitz scrambles, gets a bump for Armando, who sends it off Williams' arms and way out the back door, actually the transom of the back door. Point Illinois State. Varga out, Holt in to the Illinois State front row. Joining Armando in line. Jankowitz serves. Ogle off the block of Line and Armando for a side out for the Bearcats. 
Courtney Pence that time. That ball off the block hung up in the air for a long time, but went over press row, and you could tell Pence wanted some way to get there. Wisely decided just to stay on the floor and let Cincinnati take the point. She took a look at you and me and said, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Dug out of the net. Apparently there was a touch on the Cincinnati block. Ogle converts it, though, for the Bearcats. Just like that, the Illinois State's lead shrinks to three. Cincinnati pretty fired up right now. You look at their sideline, head coach getting involved. This would be a big win for the Bearcats just to turn the tide of their season. Saved by Jackowitz. Remember, she was back row, couldn't do anything else with it. Pence now to Holtz. Block touched it, slowed it maybe just enough for Nolan. Ogle again, but that's a nice dig by Wallen. Armando swings long. Point, Cincinnati, they cut it to two. Armando, as you described, Greg, has so much pace on that ball, but sometimes when you have too much pace, has a tendency to go long, and we've seen that a couple times from Armando. That's maybe her one fatal flaw as an attacker, and it's allowed Cincinnati to get back into this one, just a two-point advantage for the Redbirds. And it can be a, a deficit for her when the ball's not as high as she needs it, either through just transition play, defensive play, or a set that's not quite there for her. But the Redbirds and the Bearcats once again have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in the third set and now the fourth. The Illinois State jumped out to a big lead here in the fourth. And Cincinnati said, wait a minute, we're not done. We don't need to get on the bus just yet. We don't have any plans for later tonight or tomorrow. The size of that lead has differed. Holt kept alive by Tinglehoff. Swung across by Stamato. Armando has to stay flat footed and give a swing. Now Ogle down the line, Pence keeps it off the varnish. Armando swings. Ogle tries again, just one blocker line, popped it up though for Pence. Here's Holt, long point Cincinnati. Couple of tired teams out there. Some long rallies don't help that condition either. Line runs off the floor on the slide play, slaps that the Bearcats find it. Pence comes up to recover on the second contact, but pushed long by Holt. And a fourth set is tied. Greg, here at the arena, you can feel the tide shifting, and that's why the Redbirds want a timeout right now as Illinois State has ceded the momentum to Cincinnati, who's had an incredible return since the intermission. Comebacks in each of the third and now the fourth set to get themselves back in this match. The pressure team, possibly, the Bearcats, making a real run right now. As you see, the Illinois State bunch right now waiting as the Brain Trust comes up with their verdict. And now Coach Johnson will impart to her bunch. We have to remember, it was 7-1 in this fourth set. So since then, it's been all Cincinnati. They've taken a six-point advantage just to get back to even. And now the, Red, the Redbirds, who rolled off that wonderful start, have had that lead erased. They're going to have to fight and use whatever energy they have left or perhaps go deeper in that depth that we talked about. Illinois State does have a lot of talented players on the bench. This might be an opportunity for one of them to come out and make her presence felt at this point, this juncture of the match. Bearcats break out of their huddle first. You see their setter, Jade Tinglehoff. Now the Redbirds out onto the floor. Lexi Varga comes in. Replacing Holt in the Illinois State lineup. Wallen, sidestep, sidearm pass to line. And she took two on two blockers and one. And Illinois State takes that narrow lead in this fourth set. Into the match, Kendall Meyer. 
The freshman out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, serving for Illinois State. And Meyer has an unusual serve, a high floater, one that can be difficult to handle. Nolan passes. Tinglehoff will try Ogle. Jankowicz with the two-hand dig. Shoved across by Wallen, but the Bearcats go to work on it. A tough set from the libero because the Bearcats a little bit out of system. And the tip hits the antenna, Point Illinois State. That's what happens when you get a team out of system. Libero has to, to set, and that time Abby Williams, not a very good set, and allows the Redbirds to take advantage and take a two-point lead late in this match. All the way off the basketball floor, Meyer serves. Bearcats go with Ogle, and she wins it back for the Bearcats on a side out. Redbirds have played a lot of volleyball today. This match isn't far away from two hours. Already played more than four hours of volleyball today. The veto, nope. The veto was overridden. The block went out of bounds. 2020, an incredible stretch of volleyball from Cincinnati as they battle back just one win on the year, looking for their second here. Line tips, but Williams dives to get it for the Bearcats. Slapped into the double block, returned by Cincinnati when they got it back. Now here's Wallen, got it tangled up in the Cincinnati block, but they untangled. And got it out to Stamat, who sends it over, but the Redbirds cover. Varga right side angle for a kill. And Greg, we just talked about how Cincinnati was out of system. The libero, Abby Williams, had to set. Illinois State had Courtney Pence set. It was a brilliant set, one that set up Lexi Varga brilliantly, and that's the difference right now between these two clubs. Part of the reason the Redbirds have this two set to one advantage. You saw that fist punch by Pence when the ball hit the floor, and she serves. Bearcats with a high rainbow tip. Keen is blocked, and it's Muldrow to issue the denial. Knotted at 21. This has been a prize fight in the last two sets. That was what Illinois State wanted. They got the ball to Keene in the center of the floor, looking to go up two points. Instead, Cincinnati sends it back. Meyer with the pass, gives to Wallen, but Stamatu with the dig off the floor, but Ogles there. From the back line, Stamatu swings. The Redbirds are there. Keene tips. Ogles starts. Here's Nolan. Pants digs near the net, though, and it's won by Nolan. Vargo went up just a little early. Remember I said he, she who touches second usually wins, but it was Nolan who had it in her crosshairs the entire time. Varga turned in order to go do battle, but as a result didn't know exactly where the volleyball was. Mikhail Leonard checks back in for Illinois State looking to bring some attacking power. Shoved over by Keene on the quick. Now dumped across by Tinklehoff. Did not fool Pence. A hook shot by... The Redbirds, Michaela Leonard. But it goes long. And Cincinnati has taken a two-point lead. Meyer pass. Varga has to backpedal hard in order to get underneath it for a decent swing. Bearcats find it but cannot run offense. They send it free. Keen. Into the shoulders of Williams, but a nice dig. Another free ball for Illinois State. Varga off the block. Redbirds were given two free balls in that rally. They converted the second one, and the Redbirds cut it to one. Cincinnati, though, has been great when they've been forced to scramble. A couple of those free balls actually tested the Redbird defense, and they've fought really hard in this match to get it to five. Let's see if they can do it. The Redbirds cannot because it is a service error sent long, and it is set point for Cincinnati. Short service. Keen off a blocker, and then a big dig by Stamatu. Meyer digs for Illinois State. Now Ogle for the Bearcats. Nolan with a changeup shot. Varga keeps it alive for Illinois State. Net play. Contact by Leonard on her swing. 
and that gives Cincinnati the fourth set. They surge from behind to get this to a fifth and deciding set. We go to the fifth, the final set of the week. Perhaps inspired by their head coach who's not with us, expecting a child, as you've mentioned, Greg, intimately. It's been a fantastic effort by this Cincinnati team to battle back. They've played inspired in these third and fourth sets. They've come back in each set. They were down early in each of those sets. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of teams down two sets and on. Final match of a three-day of a two-day tournament, three games in two days, might have rolled over, not this Cincinnati club. Credit to the coaching staff, credit to the players. They fought for every point. And if you are looking at this match right now, you'd say momentum's on the side of Cincinnati, and the Redbirds have to figure out a way to reverse that. In the side for Cincinnati, just keep on keeping on. As we mentioned, the Redbirds did not want this to go to a fourth set. Cincinnati knew that, and it turns out that we were a bit prophetic because... Cincinnati, possibly the fresher team, and now Redbirds just have to find a way to get uh, 15 points, and Cincinnati is hoping to take advantage of uh, maybe a fatigued Redbird squad who's been playing volleyball for about four and a half hours uh, in their two matches today. We this talked is their tenth as, set of the day. We talked as much about emotional being emotionally tired from that five-set match, being emotionally drained, and I think that'll come into play here as well. As much as the team is physically trained, mentally and emotionally, just to, to be involved in a match and have to be that focused for five sets once is difficult. To do it twice in a period of six or seven hours, that's really, really difficult. You've mentioned they've played volleyball for now over four hours today, and it's now a, a measure of this team. They're really going to be tested in this match. Can they find a way to battle back, and can they find a way to at least place highly in their own tournament. 28 ties, 11 lead changes on our match. All of that registered in the second, third, and fourth sets because Illinois State led wire to wire in the first set. 12 blocks for Illinois State, nine for Cincinnati. These are match totals. The Redbirds are hitting 153. The Bearcats are hitting 080. And Cincinnati out hit the Redbirds in the fourth set, 174 to 115. Kill leader Carly Nolan with 13. Ellie Ogle with 12, though, for the Bearcats. Set off the floor of the dig. Jankowitz can't get to it. And it's a point for Cincinnati to start the fifth. First to 15 will switch ends halfway through. By the way, for Illinois State, 10 kills for Lexi Wallen, 12 for Juma Armando. Jalen Clean leads everybody with 19 kills. The one advantage for the Redbirds is they've been very good starting sets, and in a set to 15, that becomes much, much more important. Wallen is blocked, but out. Wallen kill, Point Illinois State. Michaela Leonard, the hometown product, stays on the floor, and she serves for Illinois State. The redshirt sophomore, step in a slap. Nolan passes for the Bearcats. Ogle dug one-armed by Kendall Meyer, but the attack off the net is into the antenna by Lexi Wallen. It's a tough angle to attack for Illinois State. Goes off the antenna. And down 2-1. to one. Advantage to Cincinnati. Momentum on their side. And this would be an incredible comeback by a Bearcat team that's only win this year has come in five sets. Over Crosstown rival Xavier. Off the floor, Meyer gets to it, sent free by Wallen. Nolan starts for the Bearcats. Stamatu long. She was off the pin a bit, and that's what will happen with those sometimes. Huge in that situation, Illinois State had to send a free ball over. That allows Cincinnati to set up the attack. Bearcats can't take advantage, and for the Redbirds, it allows them to get back even 2-2 in this fifth set. Bump by Stamatu, back row attack from Nolan, dug by Varga. From the back line, Wallen picks up the kill. Lexi Wallen turns in her 12th kill. Back row attack, successful for Illinois State. Right in the five hole of the block. And getting it right back as Muldrow for Cincinnati. Even at three. 
And you wonder if how the previous fifth set, a 17-15 victory for Seton Hall, plays in the mind of this Illinois State team. They went to five sets earlier today, did not go their way. Looking to reverse that here. Juma Armando is denied. He closed on that block on the right pin for Cincinnati as they saw her wind up and fire. And Muldrow and Tinglehoff combined for the stoppage. Penn's pass for Illinois State. Armando will try again, but I don't think she even cleared the tape this time. It's still deflected out of bounds, so either way, it's a Cincinnati point even in the fourth. And Even the, in the fifth, I beg your pardon. And for the Redbirds, they get Jalen Keene back on now, a big opportunity. And it looks like Megan Buki instead will serve. Keene, normally a very good server, has had trouble today. And Buki, the senior, making her first appearance since Kennesaw State last Friday. She's also a local product. Somewhat local, about 30 or so miles away. Out of Long Point, Illinois. Tiny Livingston County town, and the Redbirds almost celebrated, and Cincinnati said, no, we want to keep playing. But the Redbirds can celebrate the next time over. Juma Armando collects. For Juma, that's kill number 14. How about Yuki as well? Comes on having not played all day today and has a nice serve. Precious player out there. Nice dig Wallen. A shoot to line from Jankowitz. And line redirects it properly. Timeout, Cincinnati. We'll spend the stoppage as Philip White wants to chat with the Bearcats as Illinois State takes a two point lead here in the fifth. Couple of marathon sessions for Illinois State. Cincinnati is pushing the hosts to the limit here in the final match of the Redbird Classic. Service goes long out of the timeout to give Cincinnati the point to make this just a one point fifth set. And for Illinois State, the thought in the third was this could be over 26-24 in that third nearly finished off instead Back from the dead are the Cincinnati Bearcats. And it has been toe to toe ever since that time. If not even a little bit before. The slap goes a little bit long. Williams to serve for the Bearcats. Knuckles serve and a short one at that. Joust sent over by Illinois State. And the kill for the Bearcats, record, recorded by Megan Kissel. Now a timeout for Illinois State. Three so consecutive we, points for the Bearcats. So each team has spent a timeout here in the fifth set. As the Bearcats, with a few more smiles, quite obviously, as they have surged now to take a one-point lead here in this fifth set. Tom Price been alongside. I'm Greg Hallbleib. It has been a busy weekend here on Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena. As the Redbird Classic, with a total of eight matches, or uh, 
Yeah, total of eight matches. Almost lost count there for a moment. Each team playing three matches here. Dayton and Seton Hall also involved here at the Redbird Classic. Dayton just swept Seton Hall in the earlier evening session match. Seton Hall beat Illinois State in five sets earlier this afternoon, and the fifth set even went to extra time. 17-15 Seton Hall. Illinois State's going to break their huddle first, and now the Bearcats are ready to go. Redbirds, all Redbird matches. Illinois State matches on the Valley on ESPN3. Well, all the Valley matches are there, but all the, even the non-conference home matches. Redbirds back here in a couple weeks. And Juma Armando records the side out for Illinois State. Redbirds will play again on Tuesday, and I'm sure this will be a Redbird team that will enjoy their days off before then. Yeah. Such as it is, that's a Sunday and Monday off, and you know they'll be in the gym Monday. Nolan, that's a nice up by Wallen for Illinois State. Armando slaps a roller. Dug by Stamatu, but then the swipe is kept alive by Jankowitz. Cincinnati to work. Ogle, long with her attack. She was about a dozen feet or so off the net, and that gets us to the first team to eight points, so we'll switch sides with a narrow 8-7 Illinois State lead. Even about the cheerleaders switch sides. They're running behind us. It's about as close as you can get. Two sets to two, eight to seven in the fifth set, and looks like we're in store for a fantastic finish. Leah Johnson right now, one and one in her career at Redbird Arena. would like to pick up that second victory. She said from the outset how much she was looking forward to being the home coach in this facility, having played here as a visiting player. The tap by Nolan, blocked back at her. Nolan takes a swing and tools this one to get the winner. Even again. Jade Tinklehoff, the setter, the junior from Lakeville, Minnesota. It's a Twin Cities area community. And her serve goes long. Meyer into serve. She replaces Armando for Illinois State. Pence kept it off the floor, but not toward the net. Goes over to Cincinnati. You can tell how much this match means to both teams, giving maximum effort despite a long day for both clubs here in the fifth set as we're past 9 o'clock now here Central Time. Tinglehoff with the dig. Williams has to be the setter. And this is off the top of the blocker from Stamatu. Now a timeout for Illinois State now that the Bearcats have taken a one-point lead. It is a 10-9 score, but that means we're in the later stages now of this fifth set, barring any deuce or overtime. First team to 15 will come away with this match. Of course, you got to win by two as well, so... I have a feeling we might see some extra points unless somebody decisively pulls away down the stretch here. It's been that sort of match ever since the third set went in favor of the Bearcats. And at the time, it felt like a small roadblock for Illinois State. That ended up being a major hurdle in terms of trying to get this victory. The Bearcats came back in the fourth set as well. And then once you get to the fifth set, anything can happen. And we've seen two evenly matched teams ever since that third set. Cincinnati still not hitting 100 for the match, hitting 095, but in this set, they're out hitting the Redbirds 250 to 200. And Illinois State hitting 156 on the match, and they have actually committed two more hitting errors than Cincinnati, 33 to 31. However, they've outkilled Cincinnati 63 to 48. 
12-10 blocks advantage for Illinois State. And the dig's pretty even, 89-86 for Illinois State, that very slight edge. Bearcats with a narrow lead. Nolan given permission to put the ball in play to a knee Meyer. Slapped by Leonard. Bearcats on offense. A roll shot for a winner. Just a little hook from Stamatu. The Bearcats lead by two. Key juncture for Illinois State. Down two. Only four points away from a possible Bearcat victory. You have to stem the tide here and reverse the momentum. Backpedaling Meyer with the pass. Jackowicz goes behind her and it is deposited directly on the sideline, or maybe it was wide. The net violation was signaled immediately. The Cincinnati bench erupts at the call. They were trying to point out to the official, go take a look at it on the replay, which the official's not about to do, and is advising them, <laughs> don't ask me to do that. And Cincinnati now with a two-point lead as they get it back. And coming in to serve is Emily Azara, the freshman from Louisville. Not seen her since the early stages of this match. Michaela Leonard goes down the line from the right pin. The Bearcats' lead is down to one. Leonard is serving. Ogle down line, Pence digs. Wallen for Illinois State punches it down the left line and Nolan can only reach it with a knuckle and nothing more. The fifth set is tied at 12. Back and forth we go. Illinois State from that key juncture I mentioned just a moment ago has responded well. And now? Final three points, anything can happen. Stamatu sends the pass tight to the net, but Tinglehoff sets. Stamatu's attempt is dug. The block by Ogle and Modro, mostly Ogle, gives the Bearcats a narrow one-point lead, a baker's dozen to a dozen in favor of the Bearcats. Mostly Ogle's arms, and she serves. Wallen, out the back door. Ogle had a piece of it, diving, rolling. A dig, though, gets us even at 13s. Meyer out, Armando back in. So you have a pretty potent front row there for Illinois State now with Keenan Armando and Jankowicz, the setter, is also in the front row. A timeout spent with a 13-13 tie in the fifth. Tom Prize, I mean, we didn't imagine this an hour ago. No, I think everyone expected this to be the eighth and final set was about an hour ago, everyone thought, for the Illinois State Redbirds on the day. Instead, how about you play a full ten sets? A double header followed by another full five sets. That's a long day for the Illinois State Redbirds, but, Greg, we've talked about it a lot. Ultimately, that does not matter right now on the floor. Doesn't matter how tired both of these teams are. There's no doubt that I'm sure the Bearcats are drained as well. You have to find that extra reserve of energy, that adrenaline can pull you through these last couple points. And it comes down to execution at this point. It comes down to who can avoid the small mistakes as your brain gets a little fatigued and your legs get tired. Who can find the extra elevation? Those are the small differences right now that determine winners and losers at this juncture of the match and ultimately determine who's going to have positive seasons and who will end up on losing seasons. It's the last match of this Redbird Classic. as Illinois State in white. There you see Cincinnati associate head coach taking over for his wife here this weekend, Philip White, Molly Alvey. Just about to give birth to a child. Into a double block from Muldrow. Bearcats send it back though to Illinois State. Keen is blocked, but she chicken wings it back into the air. Amado delivers it free to the Bearcats. Stamatu punches one down line. Kept alive. 
Keen with a little hook. Somehow reaction over on two from Muldrow. And Keen slides out and goes line. Keen with a dig, a middle attack, a middle chicken wing, and then slides out to the right pin to get it back for Illinois State. And it's match point. Listen to these fans. First match point for Illinois State this evening. Lexi Wallen to serve. Williams pass. Stamatu into the double block, but Keen untangles it. Jackwich back to Keen, punches it deep for Nolan for Cincinnati. Stamatu off the double block, but not kept alive by Varga, and we're going to extra time in the fifth. Tied at 14. Why not at this point? And those fans that arose to their feet sit down for a moment as now we're tied once again. And a dangerous situation here. A point for Cincinnati gives them their first match point of the day. This has been an incredible effort by both clubs. Kasanthi Stamatu. Lexi Wallen passes. Punched by Keen. Off Stamatu. Over the Cincinnati bench. Point Illinois State. Match point for the Redbirds. And it'll be Megan Butke, who we saw earlier come in and serve. She'll once again have the honors. Ball in the hands of the Long Point Illinois senior. Pence out the libero. Slide play, blocked from Meldrew. Bearcats can't unravel it. And Illinois State holds off a valiant, to say the least, effort by the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. And the Redbirds win in five sets, and they had to go to extra time in the fifth set twice today. What an effort by Cincinnati. This is a team that finishes the tournament 0-3 but cannot hang their heads. That was a dramatic performance for them. They gave everything they could and come up just short. For Illinois State, that was avoiding what would have been a devastating loss. Instead, they finished second in the tournament, and they earned their first Saturday victory of the season. They played another two-hour and 20-minute match, four hours and 40 minutes of volleyball, a win and a loss in there, but the Redbirds finished the tournament with the victory. What a match. A big, big credit to the Bearcats. This looked like it was going to be all Illinois State in the third set, but the Bearcats said not so fast. Illinois State, though, prevails, leading in kills Jalen Keen with 21, Juma Armando 15, Lexi Wallen with 14 for Illinois State, 15 kills each for Cincinnati's Carly Nolan and Ellie Ogle, 12 from Crisanti Stamato. Fine match today. Mr. Tom Prizman enjoyed it greatly. Great to be with you, Greg. Big thanks to Autumn Conley and the crew. The Redbirds of Illinois State win in five over the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And for Tom Prizman, I'm Greg Hallbleib. As to watch this entire match on replay, as well as other productions on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation.